Hello guys, my name is Anna and I vlog daily from Ukraine since the start of brutal Russian invasion. So if you're new to the channel, you support Ukraine and you want to know the updates, please subscribe. And to those of you who are long-term friends of my channel, I have to confess, today I'm in Lublin working in one very interesting NGO workshop and the background is different because I'm from my hotel room with a badge on me. But I have to react to one really sad thing that happens now, and that is war between Armenia and Azerbaijan. And it is closely connected to global peace, to Russia, and let me explain why. Well, first of all, uh, Russia has given this precedent, and now Azerbaijan also called it the anti-terroristic operation. I am personally always against these terms that substitute the cruelty and brutality. We have to call war a war. Also, I am not going to speak about whose position I take in this war, but I will try to explain you the background for it and how it all is connected to war in Ukraine, to Russia, Soviet Union and Russian Empire. In our Soviet Myths Debunk series, I often remind you that many of uh, borders in Soviet Union, when it was shaped, were planned with built-in conflicts. Um, countries were uh, separated in a way that many territories on the border were uh, represented by different ethnic groups. And for example, Nagorny Karabakh, uh, a territory because of which this war takes place uh, belongs to Azerbaijan but is ethnically inhabited by Armenians. It was so historically but when uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan joined or were occupied by communists and became parts of Soviet Union the border went in a wrong direction thus freezing potential conflicts. They were doing that with Ukraine they were doing that with Belarus, uh, with Poland, everywhere where they can hide a bomb, they will always do that because Russia is a terrorist state. And if you're not yet subscribed, please do and help us fight informational war. This is very important. So <clears throat> in Soviet Union, they coexisted with some minor conflicts, but after the collapse of the USSR, many republics started proclaiming their independence and that's the moment when problems started for Armenia and Azerbaijan because inhabited by Armenians Nagorny Karabakh wanted to join Armenia and according to international laws it belonged to Azerbaijan. That's why it's so difficult to give your own evaluation to the situation but the core of the problem is visible. <clears throat> One of the largest wars took place in uh, Nagorny Karabakh back in the beginning of independence after the collapse of Soviet Union and uh, Armenia to some extent won this war but not in this official way which is again another problem don't you ever agree on partial peace or something that people often want Ukraine to negotiate with Russia the victory has to be full, has to be final, because otherwise it is just a frozen conflict and it waits for a year, for 10 years and causes more problems, more victims and more tragedies. I don't want that to Ukraine. And, um, but uh, Azerbaijan uh, decided to, to like follow some of the demands of Armenia and this Nagorny Karabakh to some extent functioned as a so-called independent uh, territory. It was not legally independent, but it was more or less silent. <clears throat> Russian peacekeepers came to Armenia and promised to guarantee uh, the interests of Armenia. And that's why for a very long period of time this country was choosing uh, politically to support uh, Russia. <clears throat> uh, they are very different with Azerbaijan, first of all, because Azerbaijan is mainly Muslim country, Armenia is mainly Christian country, and there are lots of historical, religious and con cultural conflicts that do exist between different countries, between neighbors, but they were always fueled and by Russia too. <clears throat> uh, Azerbaijan was supported by Turkey. They have lots of connections, economic and cultural. 
and in 2022 a new war very intense war started this was the very first time by the way when we learned the word bayraktar because turkey supplied azerbaijan with bayraktars which were used in armenia too and uh russia that promised to guarantee armenia its interests that because of that armenia was quite pro-russian i'm sorry if i have some followers from there but that was an obvious fact and russia decided not to interfere that is a very russian approach it uses the countries but it never actually delivers what it promises or guarantees and now i'm addressing those neutral countries who believe they can save their independence or some economic interest by being neutral no when evil happens you always have to react if you agree with me and you understand that lots of problems in this world are from russia please subscribe and help share this message <clears throat> and approximately in that time a political revolution took place in armenia but they did not have much time to apply things because that was a very worrisome period but Armenia started returning back to democratic values, um, encouraged cooperation with European uh, Union, with NATO, seeing that Russia is actually not a real ally and uh, is not a guarantee. But at the same time, um, Armenia was often used by Russia, even during this time, even after the war in Ukraine started, Russian war in Ukraine started, to avoid sanctions and guys we have to confess that Russia has found lots of ways to avoid sanctions otherwise if sanctions were super successful Russia would not be able to produce that many missiles that many artillery supplies and other stuff its military uh, sphere is functioning and one of the main tasks of um, sanctions was actually to stop Russia from uh, producing but it does. And many countries, many small countries, many dependent on Russia countries, many countries that trusted Russia like Armenia did, helped her avoid the sanctions and bought various stuff that Russia needs. <clears throat> uh, Armenia is a country that has uh, lots of uh, diaspora in France, in the United States. And to some extent, it's inclined to Western values, to democracy and other stuff, but was once again hidden behind this uh, Russian, uh, I don't want to say curtain, it's more of a fence. <clears throat> but uh, to sum it all up, I have to say that first of all, it's bad for Ukraine. Any war is bad. And I always, now having that experience, I realize how bad it is and I never wish you experience that. Though I realize that not living through the times of war, you know very little. And honestly, I do understand many of you speak about the Second World War experiences that you share in your families. We also have that experience. But living through a new war after the Second World War is something totally different. So please don't equate that. Be sensitive. <clears throat> so war is always bad. Second, it will distract attention from uh, Ukraine and support to Ukraine to the decisions what to do in the region of uh, Nagorny Karabakh which is good for Russia. Russia is not going to support Armenia, it will observe, because like it doesn't care about the country at the moment. But it is a message, a very clear message to those countries that play, want to return neutral and believe that Russia will help them. No, never. Russians are bullies, Russians are criminals, and they simply use that. And one more important thing that we have to remember, Russian Empire, Soviet Union and modern Russia worked really hard to encode various conflicts and thus cause more and more troubles for the world. So we have to stop them, we have to stop Russia because war in Ukraine, Russian brutality, uh, their crimes, they inspire others, they show that it's allowed. Putin is still a president, Russia is still treated as a political country. So we have to change that and I hope you will help us. Don't get tired. Thank you so much for your support, buying me coffees and becoming my patrons. Thank you for your comments. Please share because some of my videos were a little bit in the shade. <clears throat>
introduce yourself to our merch there are lots of beautiful things for autumn let me know what are your favorite positions also let me know would you like to have a live chat possibly this saturday are you free on saturday i will also ask my beautiful moderators if they will agree but we had a preliminary talk and uh, once again thank you so much for your support subscribe to my instagram twitter threads join my discord community but most importantly protect support ukraine in your conversations and let's follow the situation in azerbaijan and armenia and i feel really sorry for all the people and my thoughts and prayers are with you too slavo ukraini